Hey everybody, welcome back to Church Talk, where we talk about everything involving the local church. My name is Rob, and today we're going to be talking about how to get your stage a little bit quieter. We've all dealt with monitors that's just blaring really loud and you're trying to get over top of the drum set because it's just a loud instrument and your keyboard player is saying, I need more keys and your singers are saying, I need more of my vocals and your guitarists are saying, I need more of me and everybody's saying, I need more of me and it's this constant battle up and down trying to really... It's a constant battle up. It's like there's never this turning down because everybody's needing more, needing more, needing more. And before you know it, you have this really, really loud stage to where it's so loud that it doesn't matter what you do with your mains. It's just loud in-house. And everybody's just slowly going deaf on your worship team because it's so loud. How do you fix that? Especially on a budget. Well, if you... If budget's not a thing, uh, I hate to say the budget's not a thing, but if money is not really an object, you can pour some money into what you're doing. You can fix it really easily. But if you're like where we have been in our past, um, we've had equipment you know, donated to a church and, and we were just doing everything on a very, very tight budget. Um, we had a very loud stage. And how we got around that um, eventually we would, number one is we had to build a drum enclosure. If you don't have a, a drum enclosure, uh, it's going to be difficult to make your stage quieter unless your drummer can really, um, quiet that set down, uh, w without enclosing it. But this video, I'm mainly going to be talking about those wedge monitors, how loud those wedges are. What we did is we switched, we made the switch to in-ears, but we did not have the budget to go with a, uh, to do anything like wireless packs or uh, to go digital because we still had an analog board. And we only had, I think, four outputs on our, on our mixer. Uh, so one of those outputs was directly going to um, just the monitor mix. Another output was another monitor mix. So we had two separate monitor mixes. The other out was directly to our drummer uh, because fortunately he was enclosed in, in, a, in an enclosure. Um, but the fourth was going to our live stream. So we only had basically two mixes that we could send to the stage for all of our musicians and all of our singers. So what we done is we took one of those mixes and continued it going to uh, to the stage as a monitor mix for our singers. That way they didn't need near as much sound coming at them because all they really needed to hear was themselves. They didn't need to hear music over top of one or the other. They There wasn't a battle at that point. We took that fourth send and we took it up to the stage bought a splitter so it was basically a hub it had one input I'm gonna show you here on the screen had one input and had four outputs so we took our monitor send put it into the input and then from the output we had four different outputs now this is a very budget friendly way to do this. Did it work for us? Yes, it worked. Did it work as well as what we're using now? No, and I'll get into that in a moment. So we achieved it on a budget. It didn't work great, but it did work. It brought our our sound um, it brought our our sound levels down quite a bit. So what we done is brought our from our mixer, into the back of the hub or the distribution or the the splitter, however you want to call it. And then from out of that, number one, um, 
would go over to our electric guitarist. And then number two to our keyboard, number three to our second keyboard, number four over to the bass. Um, so we were able to split that signal out. And I know now you're probably thinking, well, everybody's got the same thing. It doesn't really help. There is another personal monitor mixer that you can buy that has an in out on. I'm showing you here on the screen. It has an in out on it. And what that will do, it allows you to plug your instrument into it and then out of it to your back to your mixer. And it has a monitor in as well. And then it has your headphone out. So this way you can plug in your vocal or your instrument, whichever you're needing. And you have a separate control. We have a separate volume control. Now, I'm showing you all this on, on the screen. So you can pause the video here if you need to, to show what, what it is you need. These are relatively cheap. I think at the time we may have spent a few hundred dollars to get all of this for the entire team. Uh, well, musicians anyway. Um, so just for a few hundred bucks, we were able to get all of our musicians on in-ears and to where there was no more battle. We went ahead and ran our keyboard through that first and the guitarists went through it as well, uh, through their own. And then they could turn up and down their monitor. Now their monitor was a just a good mix of everything. And then their through mic, they could turn it up and down and make themselves just a little bit louder in their own in-ear, whatever they, they needed. So did it work as well as um, some other systems? No but it did get us by. We were able to, uh, we achieved what we needed, which was not such a loud stage. We, we were able to give more control to the house mix. And so that's what this video is about, giving more control to your house mix and taking away some of that stage noise. Now there's another way to do this if you have another board. If you have a, all this right now is talking about an analog board. If you have a board that has several outputs on it. I guess you could do this with a with a digital board too, but there's so many better ways to do this digitally. And what you're seeing on the screen now is, well, you can see it here as well. I'm holding this. This has a, uh, it's, it's, this is a Behringer brand. It's a P1. Um, you, you can put a battery in it or you can just plug it in uh, into the wall, but you can have two different inputs coming into it. Now I, don't usually do two inputs. This is basically for for stereo. You could have your right and your left in, um, then your headset out. But these things are really nice, especially like if you're at the drums, you've got this, um, you have a belt clip that you can put on. If you're not at the drums, if you are standing at, at the guitar, you can just clip this on your belt. Um, or if you're on the drums, you have this fitting on here that you can just screw this onto a mic stand. And just screw it on and there it's just sitting there where you need it and uh, it's really I think we bought this for maybe $50 they're probably 60 now maybe I'm not sure but these things if you have enough outputs on your board you can go with each output and into one of those now with that um, you still have to to mix each person's monitor for them so uh, the person who's using it does not have any control over what they're hearing they're still reliant on the sound tech to get that done for them but it does allow them to be able to make the switch over to an in-ear and it does away with that with that wedge or that floor monitor and it will quiet down your stage there now there's another um, that's similar to this I'm going to show you here now what you're seeing on the screen now is the miniature version of that same thing. It is not, it is powered, but it's only powered by a battery. I don't believe you can plug it in to, to power. Um, but the ones that we have, they are not the Behringer brand. They're the Elite Core, and they do the same thing. But these are completely passive. There's no battery we can put in them. Um, they work very well. Um, they're so small, so they just clip right onto your belt. But the drawback on these is if 
if I could have got this with the battery pack in it, I would have at the time. I don't know if they made them then, but uh, but they are making them now. So your XLR comes into it, and then right out of it comes into your to your uh, your eighth inch jack for your headphones or your in ears. Now I'll say ours is completely passive, so they it's a headphone amp, and it's not. It's not boosting that signal any. So sometimes we would have to turn it way up to be able to hear it. And so there is a drawback to that, that passive. I would rather have one with a battery in it that boosts that signal to where I don't have to max it out to be able to hear. Because even though you're trying to quiet down your stage, you're still on a stage with... It's, it, gets, it can get loud on a stage really quick, even with, with in-ears, because you do have other instruments, you have, you have singers, you have the drums that's even behind a, a plexiglass or it's in a cage or, or whatever. And so as you're needing to overcome just the natural ambient sound of things, sometimes those things wouldn't really push out enough sound for us to really hear what we need to hear comfortably. Uh, they did work, and they, they do work. For only vocals, like if we're going to do a, a podcast, they work great. The calls you're really hearing is just just a signal coming into your ears uh, from just talking. But when we put music into the mix, it can be a little bit more difficult to hear. But they do work. We've used them several times, and every time there's a little bit of complaining, like I can't really hear myself as well as what I would like. They're just not quite as as good as what we're used to so that opens up the door to well what are we used to well the p16 um which works very very well uh, we have the behringer board at our church you've probably seen some other videos of what i've done in the past of just showing you what we have the the, the behringer ecosystem um if you haven't seen that, go back and, and watch it. I'll put a link to that in the description. But but go back and, and watch that video to see uh, what we're using at our church uh, at the bridge. But we have the, the, the Behringer X32, and then we have the stage box, and then we have what's called the distribution center. And then, then from that distribution center for the in-ears, we go out to all of our P16s. Now, if you don't have that distribution center, you can still use multiple P16s, but they will have to be powered uh, separately because they can daisy chain one to the other. If you look at the at the back of this picture, you'll see that that um, they do have an in out or a through. Um, but when you do that, you lose the power over Ethernet option. Uh, you have to power it separately. When you use the, the distribution center, then you are you basically you've got a home run. You've got however many channels that distribution center has. I think there's eight or ten. I, I don't even remember. It's here on your screen. Um, you can come straight out of that to each P16 with one cable, one Ethernet cable. It's powered over Ethernet, so you don't have to plug it in. So once you power up your system, it's there. Gives you 16 channels. Um, now that right there is is the best that I have used um, as far as as far as wired goes. Now what I'm using now is is a wireless pack, and then I go over to my computer and I've got all 32 channels that's going into to my wireless pack. So that's that's the way I prefer to use an in ear but I've used the P16s a lot. The drawback with that is it only gives you 16 channels. Now, can you have all 32 channels imported into it? Yes, you can, but there's going to be shared channels. And then if something needs to be mixed within those shared channels, you can't do it on the fly. You've got to communicate that to your sound tech and they've got, it's not that simple. But um, if you can just have 16 channels input for your band, um, those P16s are great. So basically, how do you how do you achieve a quieter stage on a budget? Well, the first part of this video was it. Um, you can you can achieve um, in ears without being digital and without costing a lot of money. But the drawback is it's not as good as that more expensive 
method. So if you can spend the money and and upgrade your board to, and if you don't want to go digital, that's fine too. But you you can achieve a lot of this stuff uh, with an analog board. You just have to have a lot more outputs. Most of the boards that I've ever dealt with with the analog board had maybe a couple of main outs and then maybe two monitors or four monitors. There are some nicer boards out there that gives you a lot more monitor outs. Um, you know, moving to a professional type of venue, uh, professional setup, you may have a whole separate board that's for your for your stage. You know, somebody else mixing it. Um, but most churches, we don't have that. We have one mixer, and many times we have one or two outputs going to our stage for our monitors and we're trying to figure out how can we make our stage a little bit quieter as we've grown as we've brought in drums as we've brought in more keys we have more singers our 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 worship team has grown over the past 10 12 14 20 years um and we're still using the same old equipment that we've had and the church has grown, but we're not at a place where we can afford to spend ten thousand dollars on our new system, or even you know a few thousand dollars on a new system. We're not there right now. What can we do? This is it. So if you need to go back and watch the beginning part of this video and just pause it at times, the diagrams are on there to show you how you can achieve that. Um, like I say, for a few hundred dollars, you can get rid of those wedge monitors or at least bring the volume down out of those monitors quite a bit uh, and only let your your really your vocals um, and some slight music coming through there but it gets rid of the battle between I need more of me I need more of me I need more need more need more and before you know it there we are super loud so guys I hope you found some value in this video um, be sure that uh, you hit the, the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and share this with somebody else. Maybe you know somebody who, um, you know, they, in their church, they just, they don't have the budget to upgrade just yet. And they're looking at how can we get rid of these loud monitors? Um, how can we move to in-ears on a budget? Show them this video, try it out for a few hundred dollars. It's worth trying out if you can achieve it and, and um, this method works for you, then that's great. You're able to, to bring that volume on your stage down and you achieve what you needed to achieve. But um, if you find out that it's really not for you, uh, then you've only spent a, a few hundred dollars in trying this method out. Like I say, for us, it worked. Um, for what we had to compare what we went from to, to these, uh, they worked great. But where we compare where we are now versus what we were using, the comparison really isn't fair because you're you're looking at a system designed for for in ear monitors versus achieving in ear monitors with older equipment that's really not made for it. Um, so that's uh, apples and oranges comparison there. But you know, is is that is this method as good as as today's uh, P16s and Aviom systems, no, of course it's not. But will it achieve what you're wanting it to achieve? Yes, it can. Uh, sometimes it's going to take a little bit of work to get it and to get it to where you need it, a little bit of tweaking. But once you get it, it will work for you, and it's a it's a cheaper method if you can't afford the upgrade that you're really wanting or really needing to do. It can help you. Uh, it can help you achieve that quieter, quieter uh, stage. So, guys, I will see you all next time on Church Talk. Like I say, if you know somebody that needs this video, share it with them. And um, hit the like and subscribe for me. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Uh, it will it'll help the channel to grow. Uh, make sure you like it as well. I know I've said this a lot, but I'm finding out the more people that like a video... Uh, see, a lot of times when I'm on YouTube, I'm not even signed into anything, so I, I, I can't like it. But if I'm on my computer, I'm on my phone or something, I'm trying to like people's videos now because what I'm finding out is 
that is something that helps that algorithm pick up, pick that video up and keep sending it on out to other people. So it pushes that video um, on out. So that's why I'm asking you, hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me. So guys, I appreciate it. I'll see you all next time on Church Talk. God bless.